Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So welcome to the uh, course of algebraic topology. So my name is uh, Pavel Putrov, and then usually you can find me in the office, uh, which is uh, 107. Uh, so I'm often there. So if you have some questions, you can in principle just come by, or you can uh, write me an email, and uh, we can schedule either online or offline appointment for discussion, as you prefer. And a few comments on how the uh, final uh, grade uh, will be uh, obtained. Uh, so in principle, uh, the, the, it will be, uh, the result will be determined by your, by, by, by your exam at the end. And in the exam, you will have uh, to solve, just some, solve some problems, to, to, which are just some calculation problems, or prove some statement. And these problems will be similar to your homework problems. And you can get uh, a maximum 20 points in exam, and uh, the, the grade will be uh, obtained, counted from these 20 points. Uh, and uh, somewhere around five will be cut off for fail. But you can also earn some, you can also secure some additional bonus points, uh, which will be added to your uh, exam mark uh, by uh, solving homework problems. So this is a source of some additional motivation you to do homeworks. But uh, the main motiva another motivation to do homework is just uh, uh, so you can earn mark up to five point bonus points if you do homework. Like you get get five if you do every all solutions of all homework problems uh, perfectly uh, before before the due dates. And uh, so these five will add up to your exam results. So in principle, if you just got uh, 15 on your exam but you earn some sort of five bonus points, you still get a maximal, maximal, uh, uh, maximal number of points. Or, but if you like, uh, if you don't, if you're, if you're completely sure that you can earn like 20 points in the exam, in principle you can, uh, you, you can forget about doing homeworks, but <laughs> this is probably not a good idea. And you still, yeah, you will still get 20 points. But again, so for homeworks, you will usually get uh, one set of problems uh, per week. And uh, there will be specified due date, and you will be able to find them on Moodle. And uh, so in particular, the first set uh, should be already available on Moodle. So please all, uh, you should all enroll in the course on Moodle where you can find uh, the first uh, set of problems. And you will also will you'll find uh, informal uh, handwritten lecture notes for the course. Uh, and uh, okay, that's probably uh, again. I, I strongly encourage you to do uh, homeworks. If you do homeworks, you will have uh, little problems in the exam. But if you don't do homeworks, you will have a lot of problems uh, on the exam. Uh, so, any questions about these uh, organizational matters? Anyway, this is also summarized uh, again on Moodle. Okay, so let us uh, then start with uh, algebraic topology. Let me start with some uh, general motivation. Uh, so as the, uh, just a few uh, general words. So as the names of the subject sub, sub, uh, suggests, uh, so this is about uh, some sort of relation between topology and algebra. And uh, in particular, we will mostly see these type of relations uh, as for, in the following uh, way. We consider a kind of collection of all possible topological spaces. Namely, as you know from the course of your general topology, this is a so topological space is a, uh, is a set uh, equipped with uh, topology, namely some collection of open sets 
uh, satisfying certain axioms. And uh, uh, so many questions of algebraic topology, they're concerned about uh, for each topological space uh, associating uh, some group, for example, some algebraic object. In particular, it can be, it can be a group. So one can understand, kind of uh, ask a question about constructing certain maps from a topological, sp uh, from the collection, certain map from, maps from the collection of all topological spaces to a, a collection of all groups. But we want some, somehow, uh, uh, so we want this uh, uh, be uh, the result to be uh, what, what we call a topological invariant. So it only depends, so the result is the same for uh, homeomorphic spaces. Because we want uh, essentially treat uh, spaces which are homomorphic equivalent, so we want uh, the result uh, of, of, of some map like this to be the same. But again, uh, the same if we assume that we uh, treat groups uh, equivalently if they differ by isomorphism. And in our course, uh, we will encounter, we will, uh, encounter two uh, important examples of this uh, construction. Uh, one example is a fundamental group. And the other example is uh, uh, homology. Both of these uh, constructions, they, for each topological space, they associate uh, a certain group. More well, actually, the result is, uh, is going to depend on, uh, on a more kind of robust data of a topological space. Namely, uh, what one can consider is a collection of all topological spaces up to what is called, uh, so we will learn it uh, in this lecture, what exactly it is, uh, up to homotopy equivalence. So this is a weaker, uh, weaker relation than homeomorphism. In particular, if two spaces are homeomorphic, they are necessarily homotopy equivalent. But the converse is not true. For example, uh, as we will learn, uh, if you consider, for example, uh, an analogous, it is homotopically equivalent to a circle, but they are, not, but they are of course, not uh, homeomorphic. And so for each, so uh, kind of abstract, in an abstract way, we can uh, consider the map from all topological spaces model of homomorphism to all uh, topological spaces model of homotopy equivalent. So this map will be onto, and uh, the statement that what we're actually doing here in the case of fundamental group and homology, we are actually constructing this map uh, from the space of topological spaces uh, model of homotopy equivalence. So as a result, we've been the same, not just uh, for uh, homomorphic spaces, but uh, for homotopy equivalent spaces. So this was just a few words about some general uh, kind of a big picture of what we uh, are going to do in the course. And so we're gonna construct examples of these uh, maps uh, from topological spaces to groups, and we will study various properties of these maps. In particular, why these maps can be useful, so they can be useful to uh, distinguish sp topological spaces. In general, it's very hard to kind of show that the topological, two topological spaces are, are different in the sense there is, there is no homeomorphism between them. But if we can construct this map and we can calculate uh, the results in groups, and they turn out to be different, so this uh, automatically will uh, prove, uh, show us that these topological spaces are different. This is a kind of nice way, uh, cons this construction help us uh, in a kind of nice algebraic way to distinguish topological spaces. Okay, so this was, uh, again, just some few general words. And now we will uh, continue with the more concrete Great things. Uh, so let us start with the following uh, definition. 
Uh, so let X and Y be a pair of uh, topological spaces. And uh, consider a pair of uh, continuous maps, F and F prime, from X to Y. So they both uh, uh, map, uh, they both continuous maps from X and Y. And uh, uh, so let me make the following remark. So in our course, uh, all maps. Uh, are continuous. So what, what one mean by map by default is a continuous function. So we don't usually we we are not uh, we are not we don't need to specify. We are talk, if you consider if you're, if you are saying that something is a map from one topological space to another, by default we assume that we will assume that this is a continuous. It's, it's continuous. Okay, so we have this pair of uh, uh, maps, and uh, then the uh, the homotopy between F, F prime is a continuous map. Again, uh, I, uh, now I don't need to specify that it's continuous. It's a map. It's a continuous big F from X uh, times an interval. Uh, to y such that uh, if I if one consider f so f depends uh, there are two inputs one is a point in x and the other is a point in interval and uh, so if one restrict uh, this big f uh, to uh, uh, x uh, times zero point here which is a copy of X itself, uh, this should be, this restriction should be equal to F, the first map here, and if one consider restriction of F to X, uh, to X times uh, uh, one here, the end point, uh, the other end point of the interval, uh, this restriction should be equal to F prime. So this is a definition of a homotopy between pair of maps from X and Y. And then so if uh, such F, such homotopy F exists, then F and F prime, this pair of uh, maps uh, are called homotopic. So, uh, and uh, uh, notations uh, which we're going to use, so we will write that uh, two maps are homotopic uh, uh, by this uh, symbol. Okay, and uh, so what is the, uh, uh, Okay, this is a formal definition, how do, but informally, so how I understand this informally, the remark, formally uh, homotopy, 
can be uh, uh, can be is a is a is homotopy is a continuous uh, what one can call a continuous. Information of uh, F into F prime, and uh, it's kind of a, a parameter T which lives in this uh, interval. Uh, and then suit as some sort of a time. Particular, this means so we have a kind of a, a function. So for, if, you, if you specify the arguments, x here uh, belongs to our topological space x, and the result belongs to topological space y, and uh, uh, so if you take a t to be zero, then this is coincides with just the value of f of x, and we, if you take uh, a t to be one, this coincides with f prime of x. So let me. Uh, and in between, uh, in between, we have some 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 function f of x and t, and uh, this t kind of when t again when t is zero, we have function f of x, and when t uh, becomes one, the same function f of prime prime. But in between, for any t, we have we have some continuous function for any fixed t. There is some fu continuous function from uh, big X to big Y, and uh, once we change this parameter, this function deforms into. This. So let's consider uh, some simple uh, example. Uh, consider any pair of maps uh, from an interval, so this will be an uh, example of, uh, actually let me, uh, um, yeah, well, let me take the interval. Uh, so this will be example of uh, my space X uh, to uh, n-dimensional Euclidean space. This would be example of uh, my space Y. And the statement which we want to so any such pair, uh, uh, any pair uh, is a pair of homotopic functions. So how can, how, how, how does one show this? How can we prove this? Uh, this simple statement. So we want to show there is exists a homotopy, namely a function from uh, x, which is an interval here, uh, times an interval to uh, R n which is our y space, uh, such that uh, so we f uh, uh, let's say so small x uh, zero, so small x will be uh, will belong to this to this first interval is uh, f of uh, x and f of x one is uh, f prime. 
complex. And uh, this uh, should be a continuous function from a product of two interval to y. And it's very easy to explicitly uh, give example of such function. Uh, for example, take the following. So now we give a value for arbitrary, arbitrary t belonging uh, to the second interval. And what? Convex combination. Convex combination, two functions, t f h plus one minus t f prime h. Is, is it gamma, gamma totally? Well, the, uh, I'm not sure if what you mean by convex in this context, but uh, yes, it's, it's uh, you take a linear combination uh, of the uh, functions, sorry, f of x of these two functions such that, uh, uh, yeah, with the, conf with the coefficients which uh, in this case linearly, the coefficient uh, linearly depend on t such that uh, when t equals zero, one of them vanishes and when t equals one and the other is one and when it equals one, another vanishes and the, 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 the other is one. So you can see that this is, uh, uh, so here we use a uh, uh, multiplication, we use a vector, uh, we use, the, we consider this result as a, a vector space so we can, uh, uh, the values can be adapted and uh, can be multiplied by real numbers. And you can see that this is, uh, this is uh, of course continuous and uh, because this is, uh, this is a composition of continuous function, we know that the Multiplication by uh, multiplication and uh, uh, and additional continuous functions uh, on Rn, and this satisfies this uh, condition. So, any uh, questions about uh, homotopy, definition of homotopy, and this example? Yes. Okay. Maybe uh, just a, a, sm a small comment. So how do you kind of, uh, how can you visualize this? Uh, uh, so in this case, so the, uh, so this the big F is a, is a map, uh, so you can write, uh, is a map from essentially a square. You can visualize like this. So suppose this is a, a T axis and this is X axis, this is one, one, uh, zero. Uh, so this is your, uh, this is your, where your map is defined and it's valued in some sort of uh, Rn. Well, consider for simplicity uh, as a case n equals two, so we can visualize this easily. So this is just a, a two dimensional Euclidean space. And uh, so the image of this map uh, uh, looks something like this. Uh, so here the restriction If I restrict this map big F to here, so I get F, and I restrict here, I get F prime, so which are both uh, maps uh, just from the interval. And uh, well, the images uh, will look something like this. Suppose this is, uh, uh, was, uh, sorry, this was the image F. And this was uh, the image of F prime, and this is the image of the big F. Here, I mean everywhere image. And uh, somewhere in between, I can write, I can consider arbitrary T, some fixed T, and this will be somehow image of uh, this big F. That's some fixed t. And what, when I write t, so this kind of, this image of this interval, it continuously becomes deformed into this image of this interval. And it spans kind of this whole, the image of this square. Okay. Now, uh, So 
consider the following uh, statement, proposition. So the homotopy, uh, homotopy uh, which we defined uh, just before uh, is an equivalence relation on Cx, uh, comma y, so this is uh, the set of uh, continuous functions uh, from x to y. Uh, yes. So, uh, so how do we prove this? So one has to show, so this is some relation between a pair, a pair of uh, functions, which are a pair of points here in the set. And uh, so if you want to define, if you want to say something, uh, the subject is equivalent relation, we need to, satisfy, we need to satisfy axioms. And uh, the first axiom you have to change is uh, symmetry, right? So uh, suppose F is, uh, uh, homotopic to f prime, does it follow that f prime uh, is uh, homotopic to f? Well, this is kind of obvious, uh, but uh, let us uh, uh, let us kind of uh, do it formally. So, okay, suppose f is homotopic to f prime, as we had in definitions, then it follows there is exist from definitions there exists uh, this big F. Uh, such that uh, so it's a map from x interval to y such that again f of x zero is equal to f of x f of x one is equal to f prime of x and uh, uh, so we can write explicitly that this is a uh, homotopic using uh, homotopy f but then uh, of course, we can swap the role of f and f prime, and uh, so this would be homotopic uh, using homotopy. Let me denote it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, okay, let me denote it by g. The new homotopy g, and I want just I, I just take g uh, to be uh, f right like this. So g of x of t, like, uh, define g as, so the H g of x and t is equal to f of x one minus t. So this, this will be again, uh, uh, obviously a continuous function on x time interval, but uh, uh, zero and one, one will be uh, swapped. So, and since zero and one will be swapped, this means f and f prior will be swapped. So this uh, new function will be a, a homotopy which tells that f prime is homotopic to f. So indeed, uh, uh, this equivalence relation is symmetric. Another axiom, if you remember, uh, is uh, you have to check that uh, an element always uh, equivalent to itself. We need to check that the, uh, the function, any function is homotopic to itself. If, uh, again, f is just some function from x to y, uh, continuous. And uh, so here, so they are homotopic of course, and one can just use that the homotopy which is uh, independent on t. So for any value of t is just equal to f of x. Was there some question? No.
And uh, the third, probably the most non-trivial property is uh, transitivity. So suppose uh, F is homotopic to G uh, through uh, some homotopy um, capital F and G is homotopic to a third function uh, H through uh, some homotopy, uh, let's call it G. Again, F, G, H, this is a triple of function from, triple of maps from X to Y. And the question uh, we need to uh, check is uh, whether F is homotopic to H. If this, uh, if you have uh, the following two homotopies. And uh, so it's easy again just to explicitly construct the corresponding homotopy using homotopies F and G and uh, just uh, define it uh, explicitly. So we take H of X and T, uh, the following. We define it to be F equal to F of X to T uh, when T is uh, in the interval, uh, in the first half of the interval, let's say closed and uh, goes to G X to T minus one when uh, T is in the second half of the interval from uh, one half Okay, so it's easier to see that uh, this is uh, H is continuous. This is first uh, uh, what you want to check. So H is a continuous, uh, again, a continuous map uh, from uh, X times interval Y. This just follows because uh, both F and G continuous and when T equals one half, so there might be a question what happens when T equals one half on the interval, but there uh, we know that uh, since F of X one is equal to G and G of X zero is equal to, also equals to G, uh, they coincide, uh, these uh, two values coincide for any X when T equals one half. So there is no issue here and uh, uh, so again, this, this follows uh, from the fact that uh, F, G are continuous and uh, F at one is equal to G at zero. And uh, another condition we want to check is that, is that H uh, restricted uh, to zero is equal to F and H restricted to one is equal to uh, H. And this is uh, also of course true because if I, rest if I take uh, T equals zero here, it will be just F of X zero and this gives me F. And if I take T equals one, this gives me G of X one and this gives me so the transitivity is checked and uh, so this gives us proof of this uh, proposition that the homotopy is equivalence relation. Any questions? And since we have uh, an equivalence relation, uh, it's not, it's uh, sometimes it, it's natural to consider a quotient with respect to this equivalence relation.
and the quotient, uh, although we, we are not going to often use this notation, but the quotient, the corresponding quotient of the set of all maps uh, divided by the equivalence relation is uh, usually denoted uh, by this uh, square brackets uh, x, uh, comma y. The uh, set of uh, homotopy classes of maps from x to y. Another useful proposition about uh, homotopy is the following. Uh, kind of morally, uh, it can be uh, formulated as, as, as follows. That composition of uh, homotopic maps Positions of homotopic maps are homotopic. So what this means uh, formally. Write it. So what, what does this mean, uh, this statement exactly? So let f and f prime be a pair of uh, maps from x to y, pair of topological spaces, and uh, so that they are uh, homotopic to each other. And uh, G and G prime will be a pair of uh, homotopic maps from Y to some third space uh, Z. Uh, then, as a statement that uh, under these conditions, uh, uh, if, so we can consider composition of uh, F and G and uh, this is a, a map uh, homotopic to a composition of G prime prime. So they are both sides understood uh, here as a maps from X to Z. So how do you prove this? Again, just, uh, so let us assume that the, there is some, so the homotopic, there exists some homotopy capital F, and here, let's say, the, uh, the existing homotopy capital G, and uh, let's just uh, construct explicitly homotopy between uh, the corresponding compositions. Uh, so we need homotopy noted by capital H, Homotopy between a pair of functions from x to z, with map from x times interval uh, to z, 
and it's such to satisfy the condition that uh, if I restrict it uh, to zero, namely by restriction, I always uh, uh, mean just a restriction in this interval. Uh, this uh, will be composition of, I'm uh, sorry, the other way around. In F, and if I restrict it one, I get a composition of F prime and G prime. And uh, so we can take uh, the following H, such that H of X and T uh, is equal to essentially a composition of the, uh, of the homotopies here and here. So it's a composition of G, so G of F of X and T, so if you want explicit, so this is a, a here the input is a, the input which belongs to X, then the result of F, uh, so T of course everywhere is uh, some, uh, this kind of deformation parameter uh, belongs to an interval zero comma one. Uh, so the result of F is an uh, element in big Y, and then uh, uh, the result of G is an element of Z. And uh, well, it's easy to see that it's again satisfies this condition just uh, from the fact that uh, capital F and capital G were homotopies between, capital F was homotopy between F and F prime and capital G was homotopy between G and G prime. And uh, so the composition of continuous map is continuous, so there is no issue here. And uh, this gives us the proof of the uh, proposition. Any question? If there is no question, uh, let me continue. I want to introduce a new but uh, closely related notion. The, again, a map F from a topological F space X to a topological space Y. And uh, this whole, this is called a homotopy equivalence. By definition, if uh, there exists uh, another map G from Y to X, so the other way around, uh, such that if 
one takes the composition of uh, f and g, uh, this will be uh, homotopic to uh, the composition of uh, f and g will be mapped from, so if you first go from x to y and then, again, and then from y to x. So it will go, uh, the composition will take element from x and give us element in x. And uh, so we require that this composition is uh, homotopic to identity uh, map on x and the composition in a different order, which will be mapped from y to y is homotopic to identity on y. And uh, so this was a definition of uh, homotopy equivalence. Uh, and uh, so if such G exists, that G for a given F, such G is called a uh, homotopy inverse. Of. So the usual inverse would be if this was just equal to identity and this is also equal to identity. This would be a definition of the usual inverse to a map. And in particular, if such f, uh, if such continuous f with a continuous uh, g, uh, which, is, which is inverse, existed, then this uh, would mean that this is a homeomorphism by definition. But here we require something weaker. So we require this not to be equal to identity, but uh, this composition not equal to identities, uh, but homo just homotopic to identities. That's why it's called a uh, homotopy inverse. And uh, well, well, continuing kind of uh, continuing this definition, uh, we also say that if uh, such if such uh, uh, such homotopy equivalence exists, then a pair of topological spaces uh, X and Y uh, uh, are called a set uh, to be a homotopy equivalent. Or uh, sometimes uh, people also say, or uh, have the same homotopy type. The definition of uh, homotopy equivalence. So the map, which uh, so two spaces. Uh, uh, are called homotopy equivalent if there exists a uh, homotopy equivalence, which is a continuous uh, map which has a homotopy inverse. And uh, we will use, so this is a, gives us, uh, as it will show in a moment, this gives some certain equivalence relation on uh, topological spaces. And uh, the notation we will use again uh, the same as for homotopy between maps. Uh, to denote that two spaces are homotopy equivalent, we will use the same symbol. 
but before we had a relation between functions and now we have a relation between the topological spaces. And, uh, okay, let me state the following uh, kind of uh, almost obvious proposition that uh, if uh, x uh, and uh, y are homeomorphic, uh, so this is a notion which you had uh, in the course uh, of general topology. Uh, so I'm not sure what was the uh, notation which we are using there, but uh, let me use to denote uh, the, the space are homeomorphic. Uh, I will use this symbol instead. Uh, I will use this symbol. Uh, then it follows that uh, they are necessarily homotopically, homoto hom they are necessarily homotopic, homotopic equivalent. Why is this uh, kind of obvious? Is that because uh, if they are uh, if they, they, they if they if they are homomorphic, this by definition there exists a pair of maps uh, from X. Uh, uh, so there exists a pair of maps uh, F and G. F is a map from X. Y and G uh, the other way around, so that uh, as a composition the identity, uh, the composition in this order is identity on Y, and the composition in a different order is uh, identity on X. But of course, we know that identity is obviously homotopic to identity. As we just showed a while ago that the any map is homotopic to itself. And this uh, proves. Indeed, if, if, if uh, two spaces are uh, homomorphic, they necessarily are homotopic. Homo homo they necessarily homotopic equivalent. But the inverse, as we will see in the moment uh, on some simple examples, the inverse is obviously not true. Uh, okay, before, before we uh, show that actually this is indeed equivalence relation, let me give you a simple example, very simple example of homotopy equivalence. Consider uh, a space, the logical space consider, uh, consisting a single point. It's uh, well, let me, let me denote this uh, point uh, by star. So it's a uh, logical space uh, with a single element, star, and which I will usually denote in my course uh, as a PT, uh, this logical space. And, uh, and consider Euclidean space Rn. So this pair of spaces uh, are homotopic, are homotopic equivalent. We can write. How do we show this? Is that, uh, well, let's consider a map from uh, this uh, point space where I am. Well, it sends, uh, suppose it sends uh, this uh, single point to an origin, for example, and uh, a G, uh, let me take G, a map uh, in the other direction, so it's a map from Rn to this, uh, 
topological space PT is a single point. Well, this map is, uh, since there is a single point, this map is, uh, is unique, there is a unique map. Everything maps any point here is mapped uh, to this star. Okay, so what about, uh, so first let's consider uh, the simple thing is the composition in this order. F uh, composed with G, well, F takes this uh, point, sends this to zero, but then any point here is sent again to this, back to this point. So this is obviously, this is obviously identity. One point, one point space. Just equal, and of course it's homotopy. So what about the other way around? The other way around we have a map uh, from Rn, Uh, to Rn, and uh, any point here x is sent uh, to zero, right? Because we, set, we first send this arbitrary point x to this uh, star here, but then start is sent to zero. And we need to show that this is, uh, uh, this map is uh, homotopic to identity. And uh, uh, so this, uh, uh, and uh, the homotopy, uh, uh, so we need to show that this is homotopy to identity on R R on R N, and uh, the homotopy which can be realize, realizes this uh, can be taken to be uh, the following. So X here is a new point in R R N, and we just take uh, this to be uh, T times X, right? So when uh, T equals zero, this map sends everything uh, as a map of X of X T equals zero sends everything to zero, and when T equals one, this is identity. So this shows that uh, so we found, uh, so G indeed is homotopy inverse of F, and this shows that the point is homotopy equivalent to R. But they are, of course, non-homeomorphic, right? But they are not even bijective to each other. Either. So there is definitely there is a single point here, but there are infinite many points. There. Any questions? So algebra, so you see this homotopy equivalence is much more, on the this is much more kind of robust uh, uh, quality of your topological space. And algebraic topology uh, usually often cares just about, uh, in, in many uh, cases, algebraic topology only cares about uh, this homotopy equivalence class of topological space. And this is, uh, captures only some kind of robust uh, par part of the uh, topology of the space. Mm -hmm. I have a question, please. Uh, what kind of uh, things that are invariant under homotopy equivalent? Yeah, well, this is what we will uh, study. This is what we're coming to. So the fundamental group, uh, the, the, yeah, the most known example is the fundamental group and uh, homology, which we will. Okay. Well, in principle, you can just consider kind of uh, uh, this, the, any, like what we considered uh, before, the uh, collection of all maps, uh, collection, uh, consider all maps from a pair of topological spaces and consider uh, the homotopy classes of these maps. And the, these uh, homotopy classes of maps, they all also will only depend, this kind of quotient which we consider, they also will depend only on, uh, if you change X and or, or Y by homotopy equivalent space, the result uh, is not gonna change. Yeah, what I, what I mean is this, uh, uh, this set, which I defined before, it only depends uh, on homotopy equivalence uh, class of X or Y. And uh, the invariants which we will uh, consider in our course, uh, the fundamental group and homology, they all, uh, this is um, all groups associated to X. 
the, uh, the environment and the homotopy coordinates. Any other questions? Okay, now uh, let us show that uh, homotopy coolings is actually equivalence relation. that uh, the, the, the name is, ju is, is justified. Want to be equivalence. Equivalence relation. Uh, well, let me so, uh, let me write collection. Collection. Well, the proper word is actually class. Collection of uh, all topological spaces. Again, we, uh, what we want to check is that this is uh, uh, this, uh, yeah, this uh, equivalence. This, uh, this is this relation between pair of topological spaces. This equivalence relation, namely, it satisfies uh, all three axioms. Sorry, what is the collection of all topological space? Sorry, what is the collection of all topological space? Well, I don't want to go into detail. Well, this is a, this is a proper word as a class of uh, topological spaces. Well, it's not, uh, you, cannot defi you cannot define it as a set of topological <laughs> spaces because you will, you will, you will come in some uh, con it contradiction. Not, it is not set, but what yeah. is convention? Well, the, uh, you, the term is class, but uh, I don't want to go into yes, detail. In class detail. is more, more suitable. If you know, if you know what is uh, this uh, extended uh, uh, axiomatic, then it's a class. Okay. We can also use but uh, for, for us, it's just uh, uh, what, we, what, what we want to show that this is an equivalence relation uh, so we can compare topological spaces and this equivalence, uh, this, uh, this, this relation between pair of spaces satisfies uh, the axioms of equivalence relation. If you want to understand a collection as a collection of objects which can be uh, described in a certain way. In any case, we just want to, to show kind of this, the following three statements. First statement is that X is homotopically equivalent to X itself. And uh, it is obvious, uh, just take to F uh, the same as G. So the F and G as in definition, uh, which were maps, like F was mapped here and G was mapped the other way around. So take the both to be identity on X. Second, uh, is uh, uh, symmetry. So if X is homotopic, uh, homotopic equivalent to Y, then Y is homotopic equivalent to X. 
So this is uh, uh, also obvious, essentially. So we just uh, uh, so we have uh, so if this is uh, if if this pair of spaces were uh, homotopy equivalent, then there they, uh, existed a pair of maps f from x and y as in definition and g from y to x so they are homotopy uh, so they, they are homotopy inverse to each other uh, so this is homotopy inverse to uh, so this is homotopy uh, equivalent to identity on uh, y and this is homotopy. position is homotopy, homotopic uh, x and here we just use the same maps, we just uh, swap them around, right? So here we use G swap F and G third we need to uh So we need the transitivity. Uh, suppose x is uh, homotopy equivalent to y, and y is homotopy equivalent to z. Uh, then we need to show uh, that x, it follows that x is homotopy equivalent to z. Again, uh, so from the definition, uh, we know that there exists a pair of uh, maps f and g between topological spaces x and y, so the uh, top inverse to each other, identity on y, this identity on x, and the same for this pair. Uh, or this is map uh, I know, H, this is map K, uh, so that uh, H composed with K is uh, homotopic to uh, identity uh, on Y, and uh, the other way around, uh, it's homotopic an entity on Z. Uh, so then, uh, so we need to show that this is uh, uh, this pair of spaces uh, homotopy equivalent. We need to uh, present a homotopy equivalent. So we need to present uh, a map which has a homotopy inverse. Uh, so it's uh, sufficient to show that uh, if you consider uh, the, the following uh, composition F with H, which will be mapped from X to Z, And uh, uh, composition uh, K G should be mapped from that X are homotopy inverse to each other.
Okay, so let's... Uh, Again, because if you just present uh, some, some pair of uh, maps which are homotopy inverse to each other, we are done by definition. Why this is the case? Uh, well, so let's consider composition uh, in one way, right? Uh, comp first, uh, uh, take this map. Uh, G composition with K and then compose it with uh, this H com uh, composition with F. So we want to check if this is uh, uh, homotopic to identity on uh, Z, right? Okay. But uh, of course, for composition, we can uh, kind of uh, is. Uh, Associative, so we can rewrite it as following. So first, we compose first F and G, actually. And then we know that the composition of uh, G and F is identity on Y. So you can actually, so this is identity, we can remove this part. So this is the same as, uh, well, okay, sorry. What I mean is this uh, homotopic. And we use the property, we know that this is a uh, we already know this is a homotopic to identity on Y. And we use the properties as the composition of uh, homotopic mass maps are homotopic. So this result will be homotopic to position K and H. And for this, we know that this is also homotopic to identity. Indeed, we showed this. And uh, of course, we also need to uh, uh, check that the composition the other way around is uh, homotopic to identity on X. And this is done uh, similarly. Just uh, completely analogously, you use these properties. And uh, okay, so since uh, this means uh, indeed uh, uh, that X homotopy equivalent to Z, and this is provided by the homotopy equivalent is provided by this pair of maps uh, uh, F H and okay, and this concludes the proof that this is uh, indeed an equivalence relation. And uh, well, the main property is just uh, what we actually, I mean, regarding what we actually going to use in many times, uh, and which is very useful. So is that just if if two if two spaces are homotopically equivalent to some third space, they are, uh, then this implies that the uh, uh, they are uh, themselves they are homotopy equivalent. Any question? Okay, so now we want to develop some, uh, uh, there's some particular kind of uh, class of, uh, well, the, the particular, okay, let me say it this way. So the uh, particular, uh, particular way to uh, obtain pairs of uh, homotopy equivalent spaces. We'll consider it now. Let me introduce the following notion. 
there will be two parts in the in definition. The first part is uh, what is called a, a retraction. Of a topological space X onto subspace A is a continuous map. So again, I don't need to, to specify this continuous. All maps are continuous uh, for us is a map R from X uh, to A such that if I restrict this R on the subspace, this is actually equal to identity on A. And uh, so if such a retraction exists, uh, then the corresponding subspace is called uh, uh, retract. Uh, then, okay, this is the first part. So the definition of what is uh, retraction and, uh, retra and corresponding retract. The second part, the kind of a stronger version of uh, retraction, uh, so uh, formation, retraction, the homotopy. between identity, which is this is the map from X to itself, and uh, uh, let me write it, uh, F prime is a composition of uh, of maps I, A, and R. So here, uh, there was me draw the following diagram. So, uh, so for any, uh, uh, for a subspace, there is a, you can always consider as a Im inclusion map. So this is uh, I, A, inclusion. And uh, R here uh, is a is a retract. So R prime is a composition of this map. So it's a map from X to itself. First. Uh, do retraction uh, to A, so this is a retraction. You do a retraction from X to uh, subspace A, and then you compose this inclusion map, and then you get a map from X to itself. But of course, the image of this map is uh, A. Uh, and uh, uh, well, the differential reduction is a, is a, is a, is a homotopy between this identity and R prime. Position of retraction and inclusion map. So what this means, uh, uh, more precise, more explicitly, uh, 
is that uh, uh, well, if you, if you have a homotopy, so what does it mean that we have this homotopy? This means that we have a map from by definition a map from x to times an interval to x itself, such that uh, if I restrict it to zero, uh, then uh, I get identity on x. If I restrict this map to one, uh, I get uh, uh, this composition of a retraction of some retraction R and uh, inclusion map. And so in this case, A is called a deformation retraction, a deformation retract. Again, there is a condition of, uh, of a space being retract. So there exists a map from ambient space X to the subspace. So it's identity uh, when restricted to itself. And then is there, a, is there is a, a special case when there exists a deformation retraction. Is this is when uh, there exists a homotopy, uh, essentially a homotopy between identity and, uh, and retraction. Uh, so let me, uh, okay, before we finish, let me give you a simple, uh, today, so let me give you a simple example of uh, retraction. And uh, and then the uh, yeah, next time I will, uh, we will show why this, uh, why this, why, why this construction, why this definition is uh, important. Why, why is it useful? So we can see this following example. So any, uh, consider any topological space and fix a point there, x zero, topological space x. And uh, so let me uh, consider R, so there is a unique map R from uh, this total space to a subspace consider, consisting this uh, single point. It should be our example of A here. So R, any, so R uh, is, such R is always a retraction. Why is that? Because if you restrict R on this uh, subspace, there's some big X and there is a fixed point X0 here and uh, A is just a subspace con consisting of a single point. So this is uh, since R of any point X is equal to X0, in particular, if I, I restrict R on this uh, uh, subspace consisting of a single point, this is uh, obviously identity. Subspace. And uh, so there may be uh, uh, and let me also argue why this is not uh, always why 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 this uh, uh, in this particular case, for example, there, there is no doesn't always exist a deformation retraction. If I make the following remark about this example, so if X is not path connected, uh, there, do, there is no uh, deformation retraction uh, onto as a subspace. single point here, which our, here is our A. So how do we show this? It's very simple. So uh, assume, so we prove this by contradiction. So assume there exists 
uh, deformation uh, retraction F uh, such that uh, so the F will be a map from X uh, times interval X and uh, so it should satisfy these uh, properties which we have before, uh, we, which we have in definition. So uh, if I take f of x of zero, if I restrict to zero, this should be identity. So f of x zero should be x. But then, uh, and uh, if I restrict it to one, this should be a composition of uh, my retract. Uh, retraction R, which sends all points to this fixed point X zero, and then compose with inclusion map. So this is uh, uh, when uh, the parameter here in the interval is equal to one, then this uh, is equal to X zero for any X. Uh, but then this means that, uh, uh, this means that F of uh, uh, X1, if I fix some point X1 in my space X, P, uh, and consider this uh, uh, for fixed X1 uh, as a function of uh, the second argument, so this will be a function from an interval to x such that, uh, well, let me define it as a, I don't know, uh, s, I don't know, uh, s of uh, s. Yes. So that s of uh, zero is, uh, so the continuous function from interval to x, so that s of zero is uh, x1 from this property, and uh, s of one is x zero. And this means for any point, uh, uh, so we consider this map as a pass in X, so it's a map from interval to X, so that, uh, and for any point, so it's a pass which, connect, which uh, uh, so I took any point X1 here, arbitrary point, and uh, uh, this uh, map from interval to X provides me a pass from uh, X1 to X0 for arbitrary X1. And this means that X is necessarily pass connected. So this uh, arrives at contradiction. Uh, so yeah, that's it uh, for today, but uh, let me know if you have some questions. Uh, what is the geometric interpretation of deformation retract? Well, um, maybe it's, uh, uh, yeah, I was planning, to, uh, maybe it's better to consider some examples which I plan to do the next time, but uh, uh, essentially, so in this example with a point, uh, this means that uh, you can, uh, again, as, 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 as it's shown in this picture, for any point there exists a pass, so if, you, if, if I uh, consider the image uh, under this map big F of X1, this means that any point, uh, if y, y, once I vary my t uh, parameter here from uh, from zero to one, it uh, goes to x zero. So essentially, geometrically means that all space can be contracted uh, in this particular. This all space can be contracted to a point by continuously deforming. So this looks like this. So you can you can you can continuously shrink this all space to a point. And more generally, you can kind of shrink it to uh, uh, some, some shrink it uh, to the subspace. So we'll consider more examples of deformation and tract in the next lecture, so it probably will be more clear. Okay. Yeah, please, uh, please uh, enroll yourself on Moodle. There are some additional uh, materials. And uh, also the problems, uh, the problem set. Any 
other questions? Oh, well, that's it. Then.